Thousands of years ago, complex technology which bridged the gap between the physical world and the spiritual world was developed in Iraq, Egypt, Mexico and European megalithic sites such as Stonehenge. Buried deep inside sacred mounds of earth in Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, in Egypt, in Iran and Iraq and also buried deep under the pyramids of Mexico, we have discovered statues of very strange demons. Alongside these statues are other artifacts which resemble the components of electrical circuits, such as the Jed Pillar, which looks suspiciously very similar to a Tesla coil. In the ancient world, electricity was being generated using batteries filled with acid vinegar. And these devices created a flowing energy which was used by the Illuminati royal families of ancient Egypt, ancient Iraq, ancient Britain and ancient Mexico to make psychic contact with spirits, angels and demons. These devices in turn inspired the greatest scientists of the modern world, some of whom were members of secret societies which hosted seances in which ectoplasm and technological apparatus were used to show us images of the spirit world. All this technology was kept utterly secret Welcome to the world of forbidden electrical, psychic, spiritual technology. Welcome to the world of forbidden TV. My name is Chris Everard and I travel the world investigating psychic, spiritual and technological secrets which the ruling elite have kept secret for thousands and thousands of years. In this episode, we show you how many of the ancient churches of Europe have nothing to do with Christianity, but are actually temples to aliens and temples dedicated to demons. In this show, we expose the historical evidence which proves that at the heart of the Vatican, popes have known for centuries that many of the prophets were in psychic contact with very strange entities and that these spirits were in fact the so-called great teachers of prehistoric man out in the deserts of Africa and the Americas. NASA 2017 the Kepler space program has confirmed the discovery of 3,500 alien exoplanets and 2,600 alien solar systems. Whilst these planets are millions of miles away and traveling to them is not yet possible, ancient man has been using shamanism to make psychic contact with entities out in the universe. These so-called sky gods of the ancient world have formed legends and mythologies which have become the bedrock of modern religion. In this episode, for the first time on film, we analyze the oldest images and writings on planet Earth and go deep into caves in the Americas and Africa and show shamanic rituals 
being performed in which the spirit or the soul of a person was released through ritual sacrifice in order to summon gods and demons from other parts of the universe. But it is not just gods who came through this spiritual portal, it was also alien spirits, possibly from planets which NASA's Kepler program has recently discovered. All over Europe, churches and cathedrals are hiding many secrets from the people. In previous episodes, we showed how hallucinogenic plants and magic mushrooms were the major inspirations for all great religions. These powerful psychedelics became sacred plants. They created hallucinogenic trances, which triggered the so-called visions of the biblical prophets. And some of those visions, such as we see in the Book of Ezekiel, were of extraterrestrial craft, strange angels, and even stranger demons. Illuminated manuscripts in the Vatican Library show that monks were indeed intoxicated and spent a lot of their time illustrating the monstrous mongoloid demons which they saw during their hallucinogenic drug sessions. But more than that, in this episode we show you how grey aliens and other bizarre extraterrestrial entities are actually carved into ancient churches, which are hundreds of years old. At a church on the Belgian-French border, we see typical grey aliens carved into pillars inside churches, and these date back 500 years. In one church, we see an alien-type entity emerging from a portal called the Vesica Pisces. In sacred geometry, this symbol is the basic shape or pattern for the flower of life and the tree of life which is used by Hebrew magicians of the ancient world. The Vesica Pisces is an ancient symbol used by the people of the snake in ancient Greece. Ancient Bibles in Britain depict this symbol as the Holy Wound of Christ, and in the Lord of the Rings, it represents the Eye of Mordor. Long before the biblical story of Jesus feeding people with loaves of bread and two fishes, the Vesica Pisces was inscribed on megalithic stones with the Greek word ichthus, which means fish. In prehistoric times, the Vesica Pisces was associated with the goddess Venus and was called the Cosmic Vagina. The Vesica Pisces is also known to Kabbalists and occultists as the symbol of a portal between the spiritual world and the physical world. We can see that the iconography of this church, which is 500 years old, is nothing to do with what you find in the Bible. On this side of the pillar, we see the face of a village idiot. It's a gloating, ridiculous face, and it's stuck inside a spider's web. We then have this mysterious W shape, which is really an ancient depiction of the veil between the physical world and the spiritual world, and then represented as being of the ether, which is this cocoon of energy that surrounds planet Earth, we have what is very obviously a grey type 
alien creature. And it is inside a vesica Pisces. This is a symbol that goes back into the ancient world. And it's also known as the Holy Wound. And the Vesica Pisces is also known as the Cosmic Vagina. And it is used in esoteric teachings to represent a portal through which demons or angels or spiritual entities can enter. And the iconography of this ancient church is telling us that aliens and demons were considered to be more or less exactly one in the same entity. The Vesica Pisces symbol has always been related to the idea of beings entering our world from another dimension. The Lake Winnipesaukee Mystery Stone shows a human emerging from the Vesica Pisces. This stone is one of the most ancient artifacts ever to be discovered in the USA and is at least 2,000 years old. Over centuries, the Vesica Pisces symbol was turned on its side to resemble an eye. Ancient Egyptians amalgamated the Vesica Pisces eye symbol into their own magical ceremonies. And then, ancient brotherhoods, who were aware of legends of aquatic amphibian gods who came from the stars, modified the ancient Egyptian eye of Horus symbol to resemble a fish. Dagon is the mysterious god from the stars who landed on planet Earth, swam in the sea at night, and during the day he walked on land, teaching the ancient brotherhoods of Mali and Benin in Africa valuable information such as astronomy, astrology, and alchemical chemistry. Hundreds of cults worshipping these amphibian star gods sprouted in the West African Ivory Coast and eventually morphed into the ancient Egyptian creation myth of the amphibian Ogdode creator gods who lived in a primordial ocean and who created modern civilization. The female version of Dagon is called a mermaid and is used as a symbol today by Starbucks. Whilst in Rome, Dagon was called King Neptune, the half-man, half-fish god of the oceans. The parable of Jesus with the fish was encoded into early Bibles so that the secret covens who retained the hidden history of amphibian star gods who had human bodies covered in fish scales could then be carved into cathedrals and churches. This is one of the most secret symbols of ancient brotherhoods who have infiltrated Christianity. In fact, the Vesica Pisces is represented in the arches of the roofs of all the churches and cathedrals in ancient Europe, which were built by the Knights Templar. Medieval monks were following in the footsteps of witches and shamans, who in turn were following in the footsteps of prehistoric sisterhoods and brotherhoods who all use psychedelic plants to create trance states so that they could summon entities which came through the Vesica Pisces portal into our own dimension.
Waltondale Farm in Zimbabwe, we see cave paintings that are thousands of years old. They show a coven of witches sacrificing a man and his spirit opening up a so-called tree of life. The spirits of the coven members can be seen climbing up and entering a spiritual wormhole where a giant alien-headed mother goddess greets them alongside horned devil men riding surfboards. This is the archetypal vision of the so-called Ancient Ones. In Steven Spielberg's movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, we see the ancient ones that have been depicted on rock art in Zimbabwe thousands of years ago being depicted as space creatures. The similarity is no accident. Former US government advisors on UFO activity in the skies above America were actually hired by Steven Spielberg as consultants on this movie. Close Encounters of the Third Kind was the first time that Hollywood had presented grey aliens on the big screen. The consultant was Professor Hynek, the man who the US government had hired to create Project Blue Book, which was a debunking exercise, kidding the public that aliens and UFOs did not exist. The truth of the matter is that grey aliens have been popping up in ancient rock art dating back to at least 23,000 BC and were well known about by Alan Hynek. There is a longer, more in-depth version available on the Enigma channel. The Enigma channel is like WikiLeaks, but instead of reading documents about secret subjects, you can put your feet up and watch thousands of fascinating documentary films covering subjects which have been censored and suppressed from the mainstream media for decades. The Enigma Channel is a 100% independent TV network with documentaries and TV shows which are not available on YouTube, not on Netflix, and are unique to the Enigma Channel. Medieval monks in monasteries across Europe knew all about these strange demons, strange creatures and alien-like entities on the other side of the Vesica Pisces portal. And these monks encoded images of these weird beings into ancient illuminated Bibles. This is Oliver's Castle in Wiltshire, England and the most puzzling and bizarre of UFO sightings. Filmed just before dawn by a man called John Wabley, we see two groups of balls of light swoop into the field and form a crop circle within seconds and then zoom off out of the frame. These exact same balls of light can also be seen in footage from Don Fletcher in actual fact, there are more than a dozen pieces of home camcorder footage, all showing the exact same balls of light flying in and around fields where crop circles have been formed. In a monastery in Kosovo and a cathedral in western France, 
we see these mysterious balls of light depicted at ground level amongst the prophets. And these paintings date back hundreds of years. In fact, in the modern world, people are filming bizarre balls of light in many countries, especially in Mexico. The home camcorder footage seems to suggest that these balls of light seem to be making crop circles. And this phenomenon seems to have been known to prehistoric man. Two thousand eight hundred years ago, a menhir stone was carved with a crop circle design in Spain. Another example are crop circle designs discovered on earthenware dishes and vases and carved into large rocks at Oppidum in the south of France. These artifacts are from the time when the Romans occupied the Mediterranean coastline of France and are at least 1,900 years old. The Oppidum Museum also has 2,000 year old drinking cups which were used for hallucinogenic sacred wines and on these cups there is a face of one of these strange spiritual entities which were summoned by the brotherhoods that lived in that region. In 1972, at the nearby village of Montaldi, there was a UFO flap and the first crop circles of France appeared. Also at the same site, large numbers of keys were also discovered and in 1990 a remarkable pictogram appeared in Wiltshire displaying a series of rings with key shapes. This was featured on the album cover of Led Zeppelin's Remasters, whose guitarist Jimmy Page has a museum quality collection of memorabilia from black magician Alastair Crowley. Alistair Crowley in 1918 summoned a being called Lamb, L-A-M, in Central Park West, New York City. Crowley performed sex magic to invoke beings who manifested as a series of visions who were received via a psychic woman called Roddy Minor. One of these alien type entities was sketched by Crowley himself. This entity called itself Lamb and Crowley described it as an interdimensional extraterrestrial. In psychic communications with Lamb, the symbolism of the egg featured prominently. Crowley included the portrait of Lamb in his Dead Souls exhibition held in Greenwich Village, New York City in 1919. Crowley's assistant was actually committed to a psychiatric hospital following the seances which summoned this alien-like entity. Crowley's sketch very much resembles a grey alien. Many decades later, Professor John Mack of Harvard University collected eyewitness reports of people who claimed they had been abducted by aliens. And a huge number of these people reported seeing grey aliens which resemble Alistair Crowley's sketch.
Harit N. Al Hajir, North Central Saharan Desert. We're on a quest not only to discover rock art, which shows alien type creatures, but to discover rock art, which also shows other types of entities, such as horned gods, which were summoned by shamans using psychic techniques thousands of years ago. In Africa, the Americas, Siberia, and the Himalayas, shamans watched the skies and attempted psychic contact with planets and stars. By the time of the great Greek dynasties, many of the planets, such as Jupiter, were thought to contain a personality, an actual planetary spirit called Zeus. These sky-watching shamans became the kings and the queens of the ancient world. They built giant temples aligned with the stars and constellations, and associated these buildings with the various spirits and alien entities which they invoked during their elaborate ceremonies. Shamans worldwide left us pictograms and cave paintings and diagrams. But it's not just ancient rock art that we are seeking. We're searching out rock history, because there is actually no such thing as the prehistoric era. In caves worldwide, our ancestors wrote history in the form of pictograms. And we are showing, for the first time on film, the pictorial historical evidence of how alien creatures and spiritual entities were summoned to planet Earth thousands of years ago. Stone Age psychedelia is the most in-depth investigation into the kings and queens of the ancient world. It's a book which is far more than just about drugs in the ancient world. It proves that the richest families who ever walked the face of the planet gained their riches by dealing in opium, cocaine, hashish and tobacco. Stone Age psychedelia proves that the psychedelic experience is at the root of all religions. Stone Age psychedelia is available exclusively with a free DVD documentary film from ChristopherEverard.com and also from ChristopherEverard.co.uk. In the full-length episodes on the Enigma channel, we see how these strange beings and aliens selected certain species for breeding programs and genetically modified not only wild animals, but humans as well. These so-called star gods came to Earth either in physical or spiritual form, and genetically manipulated animals. In fact, legends of the Anunnaki in ancient Sumeria suggest that these gods of the sky also genetically manipulated mankind.
In Algeria, 200 miles south of the northern African Mediterranean coastline, we see rock art dating from the Paleolithic era, which clearly shows creatures being progressively, genetically modified as they pass from one enclosure pen to another. Many rock paintings in Algeria and also in Libya show humans and animals being genetically modified in various stages. They are corralled into special pens and enclosures and these rock paintings clearly show different stages of breeding programs. At each stage the legs, the arms, the heads and the torsos of these creatures are changed and manipulated. Evidence of these strange entities interfering with genetics of humans and animals can be found worldwide. At the Mutuko Caves in Zimbabwe, humans and insectoid creatures hunt animals together. Whilst in Arizona, the Hopi Indians speak of how they were helped by a race of so-called insect people who lived in caves underground thousands of years ago. Ancient rock art shows many gods and goddesses organizing human society. And there are literally thousands of examples of ancient prehistoric art showing strange mutations where the genes of animals have been mixed with the genes of humans. Some prehistoric art shows humans with the heads of dogs such as Anubis in ancient Egypt. Whilst in ancient Germany, we see humanoid men with the heads of lions. One of the overriding most common themes in ancient rock art and ancient megalithic temples is fertility. And in the full-length documentaries on the Enigma channel, we investigate the clearest and the best evidence which proves that many henges, many megalithic stone circles, Gobekli Tepe and Stonehenge itself are giant models of a human fertilized egg. Thank you very, very much for watching this episode. And if you head over to the official website, which is ForbiddenTV.net, you'll be able to download X-rated late night versions of this show, which investigate Voodoo and Jack the Ripper. And you can also visit the Enigma channel and get a subscription and watch literally thousands and thousands of documentaries like this that I've produced over the years. My name is Chris Everard. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode and we are going to be visiting Iran, Syria, Tibet, Nepal, India, Spain, France and Germany in the upcoming episodes. See you then.